Hello and welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera. Alright, to continue where we left off, um, I went to go play for just a minute off camera to run up here and sleep because our stat pools are running kind of low. And I actually typically have to play for a minute or two before I start recording because, I don't know, like my graphics system crashes or something and reloads and it wrecks OBS if I have that running. So I came up here and then in the middle of the sleep thing I got this message for um, uh, like circles in red. And it told me to, like, head down there, you know, there's been a murder, so go down and talk to Folsom and whatnot. But I already had this quest, so I'm not totally sure what's going on there, but whatever. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to join the crazy cult of me, so we'll see. I just paid the 40 bucks because we have piles of money. By piles, I mean, like, 500. So I don't know if that's a lot or not, but whatever. It's gone now, so here we are. I just worry about doing something irrevocable, and... Like, I don't know if I have the option to join either the cult or perhaps the Order of Truth or something, so I don't know. Oh, we just cycled the day. I can go fish again. Oh, fishing lady's gone. What's over here? What? This isn't... What? I thought this was a bug, but did our friend get killed? The skin hand at the center of the pool is small and misshapen. Nothing else remains of the victim. Oh no, that's what that message was for. There's been another murder. Oh no! Oh, that's sad. Alright, let's take a look at the bloody circle on the wall. Something new. Your hand reaches toward the streaks and bubbles of the blood on its own accord, and an iron spike drives through your skull. You stand before a blank wall. Sickening purple-black light spills out around the corner behind you. This is your temple, and you've been driven into a dead end by her. Blood seeps through the wall from the other side, drawing an unfamiliar shape. Frightened and confused, you tross, cross, pardon me, you trace the line, and a gate opens with a wet crunch. We have seen this. But still, oh no. Yes. <sighs> Alright, well, let's do some fishing. Everyone loves fishing. It's caught on something. You pull as hard as you can. Deep below the water, something roars bubbly laughter, and your hook sling shots out of the depths, past your nose, and plops back into the water at your feet. <laughs> Let's try that again. That's hilarious. Nothing is on the hook. All right. Of course. Well, this is bad. So this didn't add anything to us, right? It circles in red. It still just says... Oh, yep. Seriously, dude, read a little more carefully. Yeah, another person. Crooked Peak has been murdered. That's terrible. We shall see. She seemed like quiet and inoffensive. I rather liked her. Fine. All right. So, so I have my option here of either going and talking to the corpse hunters, which I'm not gonna lie has some appeal, or perhaps oh. talking to the lightning monsters, and. I'm not gonna lie. Lightning monsters are really tempting. Okay, so this is debris, but it's loose enough that a burrowing creature could easily push its way through. What kind of burrowing creature are we gonna meet? I can't possibly imagine. Oh, two things. Yes. I need to level up. Here. Okay, so what do I have options of? Extra effort, edge, or stat pools? Let's give myself edge, and I'm gonna do an intellect, because that's kind of what I seem to be using a lot of. So we'll go ahead and do that. Good, good. And then we have... No, not discard or unequip. Um, we have our daily thing. How do I use this? Here it is. Okay, do we need any lore? I don't think we do. Let's put a point in persuasion for the day. Doesn't our... Fearless Companion, the thief, though, doesn't he have a bunch of points in Persuasion? Let's take a look here. Yeah, he's got high Persuasion, so okay, so I don't need that. And... Uh, lore, Mechanical. Maybe let's go with Observation for today. And for him... Um, for him... I don't know, Quick Fingers, maybe? Something like that? So, 
What did I just say? I've already forgotten. Oh. Persuasion. Perception. That's what I meant. Okay, and Tiber. Come back here. And... Flex skill. Can I use that from in here? No, that's right. I had to do something mildly confusing. Flex skill. And let's put some points into... It really doesn't make any difference. Let's go with Quake Fingers. Never felt better than I do right now. I'm fantastically impressed to hear that. All right. chick -hacked. Let's see what you have to say. This massive creature looms over you. A scent like lightning and an underground cavern washes over you, and it reminds you of nothing so much as curiosity. It chitters and rumbles, waving its large claws through an expressive dance. Something about these smells, sounds, and gestures seems familiar, a niggling itch in the back of your mind. At least you remember the taxonomy now. This is a Stitches, a large burrowing insectoid. It points to itself and says, Chikek. It follows with another stream of high-pitched noise. Okay, can you tell me about the Stitcher? It scrabbles briefly at the wall, and a bit of lightning flares about the crown of antenna on its head. Its shoulders shrug, and you smell dust. So I've come to ask you to stop digging underneath the city. Chikak waves its arms around, and the air fills with the scent of a slow-growing fungus. You think it says, why? More incomprehensible chittering follows, and then it speaks slowly and carefully. Not learn us speech? Not work us. No, not now. We dig. Hmm. You dig under the city, right? Can you take me someplace? Over the scent of warm gravel, the stitches clacks and whistles. You understand the words yes and shins. Interesting. Also, I can't help but notice that this juvenile seems to have a whole bunch of extra limbs that this guy doesn't. So is he some kind of emissary hybrid? Hmm. Okay, I've heard that the changing god had a sanctuary underneath the city. Can you take me there? Making a note. The creature listens carefully to you and then slowly rotates its whole body, its hands in front of it. Chikek's order is that of internal organs, slowly liquefied, a bright and pungent odor. No, it croaks, not humans. Interesting. You almost have the sense of the language, the structure, the feel, the sound and scent. The itch in your mind intensifies. You can feel the memory of the stitches language waiting to reveal itself. Let's try to remember how to speak the language, because obviously that's what we're going to do. I can only get to 75? Crap! Focus deep within your mind, blocking out external distraction, and will the memories to rise. There must be a reason this tongue sounds familiar to you. There must. But try as you might, you can only conjure the image of a small box flickering impatiently in front of you. No other thoughts attach themselves. At last you relinquish the attempt. It's fruitless. Yeah, tidal surge. Come on. Can you tell me more about the stitcher? It nods its head to you, and when you fail to respond, it trills. Talk another question. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's wait on this. Again, I don't want to go crazy on this. Right, oh, this is our main quest. Um, oh no, the cold calculating jack. Okay. So I know where Mapper is. Shoot, okay. The Stitcher refused to take me to the Changing God Sanctuary. I'll have to find another way to reach it or convince them that I can be trusted. If I'd beaten that damn roll... Maybe I should have increased my effort for the day. Man. Alright. Alright, well, let's keep this under our hat. Because it sounds like if I come back after I've gotten Tidal Surge something something, that I'll be able to kind of reset those options. So... Let's go poke at the corpse eaters, and maybe we'll figure out who's going to teach us tidal surge. surge. Let's go. Oh, sorry. I'm having a hard time speaking. And to be frank, I've been really interested in the whole tidal surge bit since the very beginning. So exciting times. All right. Ooh, there's the devourer of wrongs. Neat. This pushcart holds the emaciated corpse of a pauper. His fingers and toes have been chewed to the bone. Mm, okay. The bed of this old pushcart is stained with blood and other more unpleasant things. Okay. Also not good. Underlies the cloth 
Under the cloth lies the corpse of a man in dirty, mismatched armor. He appears to have been stabbed dozens of times. Okay, I'm going to try to avoid that. This corpse has been partially eaten, gnawed by human teeth. The body cavity is splayed open, and most of the organs are gone. Hmm. Okay. Go. Oops. That's Why an interact. Not? I don't want to poke at that yet. This corpse is in a wretched state, its head and lumps crushed to a pulp, with bits of wood and debris embedded in the skin. Okay. The corpse of an elderly man lies under the shroud. His face is peaceful, and you can see no obvious cause of death. Well, that's nice. A teenage girl lies dead on the slab. Most of her bones are shattered, suggesting she fell from the great height. Honestly, there's a lot of great heights in here, I'm not going to lie. Okay, should I poke at the obvious box? Yes. Without asking. A strong aroma of charred flesh rises from the dingy cloud over this corpse. Let's lift the shroud. I'll remember that. You carefully move the shroud off to the side. There's no way around it. This dead man was a cast-off, and it would have been hard for him to be deader. His flesh is papery, desiccated. His tattoo, or rather the charred remains of it, has burned through his skin and into the bone beneath. And then, of course, there is the matter of his charred eye sockets and his horrified, gaping mouth. Parts of the corpse are missing, remnants of an aborted dendra feast. You aren't surprised they stopped. Wow. Okay. So I wonder if this is the guy that got nailed that no one seemed to really care about the other day. His tattoo is burned through his skin? Several things have been made of this tattoo. Is this some kind of tech? What is this? Let's touch his tattoo. Oh, that was stupid. The last thing you remember before your fingertips graze the tattoo is a rising buzz. Time stutters and breaks. Panting softly, you awaken, leaning against the beer for support. Your arm burns, your temples throb, and white static crawls at the corner of your vision. Someone was screaming at you in that lightless, timeless void. You remember that much, but it wasn't you. None of the dendra are looking your way. Interesting. Okay, well, let's leave it alone. Okay, so I have several options here. Mallet, B2, Kiyotawa, Gaze, and the Devourer of Wrongs. Let's talk to you. You're the only one we've seen before. This enormously fat creature stands alone, motionless. Because of its metal mask and the obscuring layer of devices, filters, and hoses it wears, you can't be sure if it's a man or a woman, or even if it is entirely human. Its thick neck bulges and clenches as if it were chewing something. You recall seeing this being before, standing behind Riss on the execution platform in Circus Minor. Oh yeah! What is your role in the Dendrohur? I attend executions and eat the condemned once they are dead. Their meat shows me the extent of their guilt and gives me their memories, revealing motive, method, accomplices, and secrets. The Dendra Ohur have always performed the service for the city. Hmm. I don't feel like you're immortalizing them. Preserving the knowledge of the dead is worthy. That's an interesting statement. So they betray their friends in death. <laughs> uh. Eating sounds a little bit barbaric. Interesting. Now I have the option of not choosing any of these statements. Let me think. Very slowly, obviously. Okay, they're obviously not immortalizing them. I don't feel like they're preserving knowledge of the dead, and I feel like betraying their friends in death is a little strong. Hmm... You're stealing their honor after they die. Let's talk about something else. Oh, I don't have any other options. Okay, that's fine. We'll talk later. So, who looks like they're in charge? Um, you have a mohawk. That obviously means that you're high within... Oh, in wait a second. Instant. It means that you're high within their social hierarchy. This altar is made entirely of human bones. Uh-huh. With a carved skeletal head mounted above, live maggots wriggle in its empty eye sockets, of course. So, since it's made of stone, where are you guys getting your maggot supply? Isn't this a little ostentatious that you have to continuously resupply the eye sockets of your idol? Come on, guys. Anyway. Mallet. The burly man sneers at you, flexing massive scarred hands that could easily encircle your throat. His tongue probes his stained, sharpened teeth, and a short, blood-stained club swings from a hook at his waist. Of course. The guy with the mohawk, he's a punk. Whatever. So, what are you doing down here, Shulmeet? He says. Pr playing in the dark? Mallet. 
Tiber mutters through a frozen grin. This numb slab beat his partner to death over two shins. Uh. So, what can you tell me about the Dendro Horror? Don't have to tell you nothing, he says, snorting. You ain't one of us. You ain't nobody. I'm actually lots of people. He jerks his chin at the elderly man who stands nearby. You want a tour? You talk to him, B2. I'm busy. Yeah, fine. Thanks a lot. It's been nice meeting you. At first glance, it would be easy to assume that this man is dying of some wasting disease or starvation. He is little more than a too-tall skeleton wrapped in translucent flesh and a tattered robe. His hands are essentially bony claws. And yet, he beams at you, his sunken eyes glittering with suppressed laughter and feverish life. Tread carefully, dear, Callus Deej mutters. Mbidu is friendly enough, but he's also intelligent. Frighteningly so. Do not try to lie to him. Hey, I got nine points in it. I'm pretty smart myself. Fair enough, though. Mbidu smiles. His teeth are a muddy brown. I know you, he says. So many eyes have lingered on that tattoo, that noble brow. He reaches at your forehead with a shivering skeletal finger. Uh, personal space. You step out of his reach. He blinks, then smiles. I'm very sorry, he says. I rarely deal with the living. Corpses are not quite so bashful. He flaps his hands at you. I remember you now, of course. Old Sarissa once saw you out of the corner of her eye, a week before his accident. Ulorimar sold you a small bag of... He breathes, clench, closing his eyes. Sugar-dusted almonds. But these aren't the only two. No. You drift through countless lives, altering and ending them. Never leaving a name. He draws his breath. Oh, I can't stand mysteries. Love them, but can't stand them. Who are you? Well, I'm not going to tell him. Hold on one second. Nice thing about a stationary mic is I can lean away when I drink. So, I'm not the man you think I am. That was someone else. Hmm, Mbidu says. The same face, the same tattoo. But yes, different eyes. Perhaps you have a secret twin. <laughs> okay, he coughs gently against the back of his hand. So, what brings you to the chapel of the Dendorohur? Hmm. Okay. Not too concerned about the cult. Well, we'll come back. You know, actually, let's start talking about the cult before I start asking you questions. It's rude to just immediately jump into demanding information from someone. So, tell me about your cult. Okay. Sorry. Reading the names first. We worship the great queen Sir Levan, lady of maggots, goddess of entropy, and guardian of the empty barrier, he says, then pauses, tapping a muddy tooth thoughtfully. Although, worship is the wrong word, perhaps. He points to the altar nearby. It displays a skull with flat, unforgiving eyes buried in its hollow sockets. She waits on the other side of death with her billions of squirming children. They devour whatever passes into their realm, and rightfully so. Everyone must eat. His eyes twinkle fondly. Ugh. But whatever she and her children eat is lost forever. And so, the Dendra Hur work to preserve their minds and the mysteries of mortals before death claims them. We hold their shrill little thoughts in our minds and let them tumble about as they will. He shivers. It feels marvelous. That's interesting. So they do think of themselves as immortalizing themselves, or as, as immortalizing the dead. So even though the primary purpose of the devour of the dead is to, you know, finish rooting out the accomplices, it seems like they do actually care. That's interesting. A sculptor told me that your people might have found a man killed by a strange creature. Yes, he says. I believe I know the poor man. Dry as a leaf, hollow as an eggshell. Barely any mind left in there at all. He clucks his tongue. Inspect him at your leisure. He's the one with the charred skin on his brow. Yeah, I poked at him. It didn't go well Make for me. Now, I don't know much more about him, he says, chuckling. Although I can assure you we plumbed the depths of his mind and body for answers. Why the emphasis on plumbed? That makes me slightly uncomfortable. But I seem to recall him before. Possibly not through my eyes, mind you. In Cliff's Edge. He was coming out of a building near the... Parlor. Chirurgical parlor. I don't know what that word means. And I haven't come across it yet. Okay. So, unrelatedly, I'm helping Folsom investigate some trouble in the underbelly. Can I ask you some questions? Of course, he says. And do sell Folsom hello for me. We are dear friends. He raises a finger. Well, he frowns more than I smile. But we do have a grand time whenever we meet, which is often. I have a feeling this relationship is a little one-sided. Perhaps in the sense that he creates corpses and then you eat them. Someone is murdering people. One of them was Folsom's protege. Do you know anything about it? Not a thing, he says, and then grins. Why, am I a suspect? <sighs> you don't seem like the murdering type. You guys seem like you're more interested in the post-murderer post um, 
events. I'm starting to go with festivities, and that just gives entirely the wrong impression. No, I don't think you are, quite frankly. Ah, he says, looking disappointed. Do tell me if you change your mind. I'd like to question your acolytes, is that all right? Can't allow it, I'm afraid, he says with a thin smile. Not without reason. They're young and easily distracted from the path I've laboriously carved before them. Perhaps another time. Are you sure you don't know anything? I don't, he sighs. I wish I did. Even in the best of times, Folsom is such a surly dinner companion. I can only imagine his mood now. All right. So soon, he says, folding his hands. Very well. I have some questions about the Dendur Hur. Lovely, he says. This may surprise you, but we rarely get curious visitors. Most people seem quite nervous about us. He wets his cracked lips and awaits your questions with polite interest. I'm not totally sure why people would be so nervous, quite frankly, unless you're already dead. So, what does this cult's name mean, anyway? The old man's dart from side to side, and he leans in. Nobody knows, he whispers, delighted. It's a mystery. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, no, I keep coming across mysteries, and it turns out that I'm the one who created them. I really hope I didn't found this cult. Uh, another cult? All right. How long have the Dendro Hur existed? Centuries, he declares. Although how many? I couldn't say. We aren't devoted to paper records, as you might imagine. We prefer keeping them in our heads. He runs his tongue along the edge of his rotting teeth. Also, and this is slightly embarrassing, none of us managed to eat our founder. He simply disappeared one day. Can you imagine? How rude. Crap, so it could be me. <sighs> Do you know anything about this founder? A man named Melmoth Lavarum, he says in size. I do wish one of us had managed to eat him. I've had a nickel for every time I've heard that. So how do you preserve humanity's knowledge? Oh, I thought everyone knew that, he says surprised. We eat the flesh and organs of corpses to assimilate their minds, and then he trails off, noticing your expression. What? I'm more interested in the process than your methods. I mean, chewing is one thing, but frankly, I've eaten a lot of meat, and I haven't picked up a whole lot of memories from them. Ah, fellow scholar, he says. Well, it's quite simple and impossibly complex at the same time. He points to the various hoses and chambers adorning his robes. We do not chew on the corpses, of course. That would be quite messy. And lethal, most likely. Humans are a diseased bunch. Our suits liquefy dead flesh, extracting the information combined within. Then we feed upon this, er, enriched flesh, it becomes a part of us. Okay, so that's interesting. And he's right, by the way, don't eat corpses. Eating your own species is a terrible way to pass along diseases. That's where, uh... Bovine spongiform encephalitis came from, by the way. But that's not important right now. So you have some numinary of some kind built into your suit, and they do all the hard work. Interesting. At any rate, we, sc we scour the streets for bodies left uh, unclaimed, uneaten. Hmm. We bring them here and lay them upon the beers. His sweeping hand directs your attention to the still shrouded figures lying about the chamber. When a body is ripe with unplucked secrets, we gather about it and taste it together. Let a lifetime of thoughts flit about ours by like little fish. Huh. Interesting. I'm not sure I managed to uh, really express the sarcasm I was feeling with that word. Oh, it is, he says. And dangerous, of course. It does uh, drive us all the slightest bit mad. He purses his lips like he's given away a naughty secret. But it's worth it, even so. Don't worry, dude. It's not a secret. So, is there something else we can chat about? Tell me about yourself. How are you? What do you listen to? No, there isn't much to tell. I've spent most of my years in this little chapel, he says, casting a fond look around. The Dendro Ahur has rather consumed my life. Why did you join them? Well, that is a good question. Of course it is, I asked it. A very good question. I congratulate you on asking it. Okay, we're all very proud of me. He rubs his hands together with a papery sound. I cannot tell you much. Outsiders rarely understand what calls us to the Dendur Ahur, but you have kind eyes, and so I will tell you that it was kindness. Beyond that, however, I cannot answer. My apologies. That's interesting. If you've got a flair for the macabre, this is sort of appealing in its own way. Let's not push it. He says no. I'm not going to bother him. All right. Farewell. So, mildly disappointing. I was really hoping that I would have the chance to discover something bizarre and disturbing. Okay, so what have we ended up with? I saw something update. Um, Sorrow's Prey, here we go. I found the victim's corpse on a bier in the Dendur Ruhr Chapel. He bore a familiar looking tattoo that had been scorched away, suggesting that he was a cast off like me. Perhaps one of the Dendur Ruhr can tell me more about him. Well, they didn't. 
I keep wondering if this is tech, if it's just a mark that the Tsar is not happy about, if it's some kind of like antenna or something bizarre like that. Okay, the leader of the Dendro Hur informed me that the Tsar's victim lives in Cliff's Edge. His house was near the church chirurgical parlor. Perhaps a clue to his identity can be found there. Well, it's going to be a race to see which one of us, my faithful listeners, or I, can hit that word into Google faster. And I, I'm going to go ahead and write that down because I don't have a chance in hell of pulling that back out of my memory. C-H-I-U-R-G-I-C-A-L. All right, I know an awful lot about religious practices and customs, and that is a totally new one to me. Okay, well, let's head out. So far, frankly, this has been a disappointing episode. I hope that you're not disappointed, but seriously, I talked to the lightning monsters and they wouldn't tell me anything. I talked to, because I failed a 75% roll. I talked to the Eaters of the Dead and they didn't have anything interesting to tell me. Or, that's the wrong game, but you know what I mean. Let's go. Ah, the Eaters of the Dead. Never mind. And our poor friend got murdered? Like, today sucks. This is bad. This is real bad. The poor lady that we gave the new Monera that I could have just kept because she's dead? <sighs> anyway. The title Affinity Skill, that's starting to bug me because it keeps showing up. And now it's showing up in actual conversation, um, in actual conversation options. Okay, well. Hmm. So, what was this down here? Where's my map? Does this extend in a direction that I haven't actually poked in? Government Square. The Reef of Fallen Worlds. <gasps> Something new. Let's go look. You know, I don't think that I took a look down one of the other forks underground here near the Lightning Monsters. Ooh, hello! Seriously, I'm going to spend weeks wandering through this place. If an enemy is armored, change up your damage type. Uh, hmm. Well, thanks. It seems a little simplistic, but ooh, look at all the eyes. On the plus side, though, I've played a lot of various RPGs. Um, no tabletop stuff, unfortunately. But a lot of, you know, games based on wildly different rule sets. And I rather enjoy the Numenera one. It's straightforward without being simplistic. I just need to kind of get a little more of a hand on what exactly, what order I can do things in. Okay. There's a cultist. So what's going on here, friend? The flesh creeps if if you let it. If you let it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Oh, Cliff's Edge. Okay, this is good. Airships are known to be nearly uncrashable due to their leisurely cruising speeds and simplified controls. This crash must have taken a rather unique confluence of events to occur. Cute. I'll bet Let's he's go. the guy who stole our airship. Not our airship, but the guy's airship. That I have the strong impression that we're going to need to know. use in order to leave this zone. Oh, what's this? This hatch appears to be the only visible means to enter the building. It's firmly sealed. I wonder if this is the building we're going to look at. So, Eretis, or Eretis. I'm going to pronounce your name based on the first couple things you say to me. The first thing you notice about this wiry young man is the golden haze, the glow surrounding him. It sparkles in his eyes and gives his easy grin a warmth that you can feel right down to your gut. He spots you and straightens. Okay, I thought that he was just going to give me a side quest. You know, that's what I'm conditioned to think. So, he's got a glamour going, so we'll be careful with him. I know what you're thinking. How in the world did you survive that crash, Eratus? The answer is, as it always is, backflips. But hold on. How did you know my name? Never mind. Not important. Of course you know my name. I'm Eratus. After that speech, I'm thinking I'd prefer I'd go in with the one closer to irritation. All right, so what's up with that glow around you? Where, says Eratus, turning around. Seriously, what is that glow surrounding you? What glow, he says, looking behind him. <sighs> Great, one of these guys. So how'd you end up crashing that airship? I'm glad you asked, Eratus, says. This is something of an understatement. He looks ecstatic. I was climbing up the cliffs to the caravansary to see how impossible it was when I saw a star falling towards the reef. <clears throat> uh... He raises an earnest finger. I knew right then that finding that star was my destiny. He runs his hand through his curls. What was I going to do? Climb down? Boring. I already did it the other way. Walk? Walk? Worse. Far worse. No fun at all. All 
remember that. He grins. Then I saw the airship docked over my head. I raced on up, borrowed the ship, and pointed it right at the reef. His voice falls. I don't know what happened next. Despite my <clears throat> expert piloting, the airship steered itself directly at the cliffs. I had no choice. I landed as fast and as hard and as safely as possible. Shaking his head, he sighs. I never did find that falling star. At this point, someone else has found it, and it's their destiny now. <sighs> I've been told that any landing you walk away from is a good landing. You know, okay, no one did find the star. Cheer up! I bet no one found that star. That's nice of you to say, he says, his glow pulsing with apparent gratitude. You're kind, you know that. That's a rare thing these days. Very rare. People like you deserve wonderful things. I completely agree. Inspiration strikes his face like lightning. His glow blooms until he's hard to look at. And I'm going to make sure you get one. Let's travel together. Don't say no. Uh, but I just want to punch you. Why should I let you join me? He gives you a puzzled look, as if you've just wondered aloud why air is important. I'm an adventurer, he repeats, brow furrowed. I thought I told you. Adventure happens when I'm around, and you'll get to be a part of it. He raises a finger. But you'll have to keep up. Where we go? He stares at the invisible horizon. We go swiftly, strongly, and most of all, handsomely. He leans in conspiratorially. Until you get handsome, I'll cover the both of us. <sighs> so obviously you're supposed to be... You think you're funny. This is the problem I run to with sometimes with characters. Like, for example, I was playing Final Fantasy VII, and I just could not wait for Eris to die, and I was so pissed off that she took my amulet with her. But, eh, uh, I don't know, man. Can I get rid of him? Probably. This is against my better judgment. If I had a way to uh, exit the conversation, I'd put it up for a poll. All right. Yes, uh, of course you do, and I'm ready. I'm always ready. I'm so tired of you. Wow, you really do have, like, flowing curls. As heroic as he believes himself to be. Cute. Okay. So he's got opportunist. Okay, so he's got, um... Uh... Overwatch. Practice in armor. Unfailing precision. Good, good. Never boring. Air just bounces around the battlefield, gaining 20% critical hit chance whenever he attacks a new target. One-on-one -on -one duels are not a right as his style. He's far more effective, leaping from enemy to enemy, dealing deadly wounds and giggling beneath his breath. Okay. The direct approach. Yes. All other party members gain 5% smashing initiative melee attacks. Subtlety isn't very heroic. Smashing things is. By following Aratus's Heroic example, our party members are much better at breaking things into small, cowardly pieces. <laughs> Alright. Somehow this reminds me of culture ship names, if you've ever read Ian Banks. But, okay, I'm going to take a break, and we'll come back, and I might discover off-camera after I've saved whether or not I can get rid of people. Oh, cool, look, she's got orbs. Okay, she's our next stop as soon as we return. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.